with George. And now he's working at the Department of Mathema Department of um, not Mathematics, it's um, Institute of um, Helping. Yeah, it's uh, Institute of Mathematics, Statistics, Physics, and uh, of University of Rio Grande. And today he's going to talk about uh, on, he's going to talk on control on the on the choice of the Tikhonov regularization parameter and the discretization level, a discrepancy based strategy. Thank you, Adriano. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for the organizers to invite me to be here uh, in this special semester. Uh, we learn a lot from this few weeks on on this nice conference and. Okay, let's go to the, the topic of this talk. This is a joint work with my advisor here in Adipa, Jorge Zubelli, and also with my colleague Vinicius Albany, at that time here in NIMPA doing his uh, PhD. So the, the question that we, uh, we raised at that time uh, was, well, uh, normally when you solve an inverse problem, you discretize uh, on the, the space where the forward operator is uh, defined and normally also numerically you, you, you just uh, represent your solution in a finite dimension space. Uh, this is what you can do in a computer. Uh, so we we raise a question. Uh, there is some possibility to choice uh, a priori, or at least give up a bound, a priori a bound for the regularization parameter in a Tikhonov type of regularization, and also from the discretization level in your forward operator, or in the imaging of your forward operator, and in the domain of the forward operator, it's, let's say in the base where you represent your parameter in some problem. And so probably all the audience say, yes, it's possible. I know how to do this. I know how to handle this. But uh, as we will see here, uh, we, we try hard to, to get a, a very nice theory for this, but when we try to mix up all the pieces, it uh, became harder than we imagined in the beginning. So uh, we need to assume many, many uh, hypotheses that is somehow hard to verify. Um, so. That is the, the topic of the talk here. Um, so I will start just say, okay, we are solving an inverse problems that we see for this whole week or for, for the whole special semester here. And so uh, I will start to uh, assume uh, what is need for, at least for the beginning, what is need to prove what we wanted to prove. Uh, and then, uh, we just go straight away to prove existence and stability of the regular, uh, uh, the, for the Tikhonov minimizers in the sense that I will show in a few seconds. And then we go to the discrepancy principle that we put there uh, in order to have, uh, let's say, a bound from, for the discretization level in terms of noise data on, of, that you can measure. Uh, so we may, uh, we more or less divide because it's, the arguments is quite similar. If you just assume that only in, the, you know the whole operator and you try to just, you, you, wanna, uh, you just wanna to uh, represent your parameter in a finite base, let's say, for simplicity. Uh, and then when you do the, the other way, you also say, okay, I discretize, I, I, I don't know really my, my full operator, I just discretize this. So the technique is more or less the same, it's just uh, a tuning argument, let's say. 
uh, a choice of a subsequence in, a, in some sense, um, with some diagonal arguments. And so I just divide this, and the, I think the, the main uh, topic is here. And then we ask, uh, OK, let's assume a, a little bit more we have some source, uh, uh, source type condition. So can we prove something about the convergence rates of, you know, of uh, our minimization with, the, with respect to the noise data and with the respect of how many elements on the base you choose uh, a priori here? And so we did that for uh, at least for one uh, case. And well, at the end, I will show you at least one numerical example that's, uh, uh, that proves numerically what we are saying here. So OK, uh, normally when you put an inverse problem uh, for a PDE equation, let's say, uh, where f is the forward operator, and so we are assuming here reflexive Banach space, but indeed in, in really uh, this Banach space should be at least uh, more than reflexive. We need a, a countable base on that, so a sh like a shoulder base in some sense. And normally when the, the, the whole theory works very well in a infinite, uh, in, 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 in a, infinite dimensional framework. Uh, but as we know, we see, uh, and as we are working all days, the, in reality, uh, we just solve in a finite dimensional setup, and, or in a discrete setup. Uh, OK, we assume the, the standard thing. We know that we just have noise data, and the ratio of the noise data with the real or, or the, the true data are bounded by some noise level. And sometimes also the data are very sparse. In, in practice, it's, it's, they are very sparse uh, or very few measurements are accessible. So those questions say, uh, comes out in our mind. So uh, somehow we need to have a, a good agreement between the finite and inf infinite dimension description of the same problem, or where you solve it and where it's placed. So the question that I just uh, said before was more or less this, this one. Is possible to, to have a criterion to find an appropriate uh, discretization in the domain of, of the forward operator uh, from the available data that maybe is parts or maybe just the, the data that you generate in your solver uh, for, uh, to find, a, a, let's say, a good solution from your inverse problems. That is, of course, you pose it. So uh, the answer is yes, it's possible. Anyone in the auditorium here and say, of course, I know how to handle this. And you can show an example, a very nice example on, on the Kirsch's book. It's just in the first page they do that. It's just the regularization by discretization. So, and as we see here, uh, many people are working this problem. So. I don't, just don't put all the reference on this subject here because it's too large. So just we know from, from the literature that there are many uh, people work on this and it's a very nice talk. So, uh, but when we just look for the discretization uh, or or regularization by discretization, indeed, you, how to choose how many uh, base function, that, that is the question. How, how many bases uh, on your discrete level or how many nodes in your discrete uh, forward operator you are choosing given that uh, you have some noise data? And can you do this a priori? 
uh, in, a, in a regular way. So we look for this problem. We are looking now not for regularization uh, by iterative method, just using uh, the standard Tikhonov approach. So we have the data misfit uh, in some power P here that let's say P, P equals to two just for fixed idea. And we have some uh, regularization term that is, let's say, convex, and alpha is the regularization parameter. So uh, what we are trying to say here is that you are propose some uh, discrepance-based rule uh, for joint, uh, for, for uh, two parameters in, in some sense. One is the regularization parameter, and the other one is the discretization on the domain level, given that you have noise data. So, so how is uh, a tuning with uh, a regularization with two parameters? One that is if you fix alpha, you have the regularization by discretization. The other one is if you, if you discretize and then you try to regularize, in some sense, you, should, you need to choose alpha. So the question is, can you choose the two at the same time in a discrepance-based rule? So that's quite well, uh, quite well known that, yes, I can do that. But uh, when you try to prove the theory that there exists and such, such a, a rule, it's quite uh, demanding on the, on the hypothesis, unfortunately. So there is a lot of reference. I just show a, a few of them that we more or less base our research on, on, the, on the same direction. But there is a, a bunch of other that do, doesn't appear here. It just appear on the reference of the papers. And so there are many people. Professor Hoffman is one of the, the main active uh, person on this subject. And more uh, people on the same uh, group and others more, of course. Uh, but uh, we, we base our, let's say, our strategy to, to show uh, this regularization uh, choice or the parameter regularization choice based on the technique that uh, this group developed for a, quite a, a while. Uh, so let's say, let me conclude what we did and then we, uh, we go to the details of that. So we, uh, we indeed, we propose a, a, a Morse of discrepance principle in, in the spirit of the reference that I just showed you. Uh, and we state that, uh, OK, that's not something new. We state that uh, in the, we can recover the continuous, gray, the continuous case uh, when this discretization that I will show you before when uh, goes to infinity. That's not really new, no? nothing new, but at least our choice say, okay, if you choose uh, your discretization level infinity, let's say, you have the same theory that uh, in the reference that I just showed you. Uh, so, uh, Probably the, the, the main uh, new here is that we, the, with the, the discrepance principle that we propose, we can somehow bound or, or give an upper bound for the discretization level in the domain. I think this is the main novelty of this approach. Uh, that somehow you can choose a priori two parameters, the regularization parameter and the discretization on the domain, or how many elements on the basis of your domain space you, you need a priori to represent well your solution. Uh, OK, we show regularizing properties of the approach as standard as can be. and. OK, if you assume that you have some kind of source condition, also you have uh, convergence rates, it's expected. 
So uh, let's go for the assumptions now. Uh, the assumptions is, okay, uh, the regularization functional, here is x0, x0 is our a priori information, because the functional can be nonlinear, and is weak lower semi-continuous, convex, coercive, and okay, and proper. So let's say it don't take value plus infinity everywhere. Uh, we also assume that the domain of the forward operator is in the t in the interior of the domain of this convex functional for everything for the Tikhonov functional be well posed. Uh, should have a minimizer. And uh, for the forward operator, for now, we assume that it's continuous and the strong topology of x to y, and moreover, the level sets of the Tikhonov functional is pre-compact and weak closed. Uh, moreover, when we restrict to this guy, uh, this level set should be weak continued with the weak topology of x to y. Uh, as normal, we assume that our inverse problem have a, a solution. So here the um, f0 minimized solution, since it has a solution and f is convex, you can have one. You may have a, more than one. So for fixed idea here, just assume that we just have one. So we assume that the inverse problem have a solution and we just pick the solution as the F0 minimal solution for this problem. So let's say, okay, our sets here are uh, non empty. Um, we need another uh, very strong assumption that at least, uh, uh, Okay, uh, our domain uh, of F also should be convex. We are doing something uh, convex minimization problem with respect to the F. So the domain of F is some convex subset of the, the set X. Uh, so we need a, a, another assumption here is that your forward operator in this convex combination between your a prior and your F zero minimized solution should grow to zero rapidly than the polynomial. Okay, this is not a very strong assumption because if you have like a, a whole continuous operator, let's say with is exponent exponent bigger than two, in the case of P goes two, it's satisfied. And now we assume something from the x indeed, or the, the finite approximation of x. Let's say x have a, a base, and we start to sum up the, the, the spam of, you, you, you take some, some elements of this base, you spam this, you construct this xm, and so you enlarge you your bases and you spam it, so you have a chain of, uh, uh, finite dimensional uh, subspace of x when the union of all them give you the same thing. Uh, and we define this, let's say, finite dimensional set dm. This is just the interception between this xm and the domain of f. Since it's a vector space, this is convex, so these guys are convex too. It will help uh, on the, in the theory. Um, okay, we also need to assume that there exists at least one M that this, from that M to on, these guys are non-empty. So we start indeed in this M. This is our M prime. <laughs> so otherwise, uh, all the theory can fail. If the, the set here is empty, uh, the functional Tikhonov uh, has no minimizers. Uh, more assumptions uh, or more definitions, we should say uh, how fast the forward operator go to the forward operators of our X dagger when you just project your X dagger to the subset DM. 
So this is the rate that we assume that it's, this is the rate. And so is gamma m. It's, uh, you appear many times in, from the next slides. And mi m is just how fast is our approximation of the, the minimum noise solution goes to the, the solution. And of course, uh, if, you, uh, if you take m goes to infinity, so since the forward operator is continuous and the, and the bases are constructed such that the limit uh, is all, all the, the all inclusions, all the union of all these bases is the whole space. So the forward operator uh, applied to this finite dimensional element goes to the solution of the problem when m goes to infinity. This is just the assumption that f is continuous. So uh, we now are looking for uh, minimize, uh, a minimum of this technical functional, but not in the whole domain, but just in the, this dm. So if, since this dm is not empty, we, one can prove using standard techniques that from regularization theory that, that there exists a minimizer for uh, each delta fixed. There is a minimizer of this function, uh, of this Tiklan function also. It's well posed. Uh, and moreover, is stable when the stability is the same stability that uh, we are uh, aware of. And moreover, if you choose your regularization parameter, which that in some sense is the same one, so now the difference that uh, uh, the regularization parameter how now should be chosen in, uh, in relation to the delta and the level of the discretization in the domain and if it go to zero, and also this ratio go to zero, sorry, there is some uh, typo here, it should be zero. So uh, at least a subsequence of the minimizer of the Tikhonov function house go to the solution of, or the min F0 minimum solution when delta goes to zero and the gamma m goes to zero. It's very standard uh, proof. Uh, of course, this is, you are approximate, when delta goes to zero and gamma goes to zero, you are approximating the, the Tikhonov regularization in the whole domain. So it's not, not new. So the, the first attempt was to, okay, let's propose a discrepancy principle like the, the standard one. But we want to choose two things here, an alpha and an M or say the regularization parameter and the level of discretization on, on the domain. Uh, so it's choose sub two guys that it's this discrepancy principle hold for lambda and tau bigger than one. So it's more or less the standard uh, Discrepance principle, more of the discrepance principle, uh, relaxed, let's say, or and of course, uh, one can raise question how to choose tau and lambda, and I don't know, but when you choose these two guys properly, uh, you you can propose this uh, discrepance principle and. We can prove using very similar argument to the, the reference that I just showed you that there exists an M and an alpha that chosen appropriately, uh, you can satisfy the discrepancy principle. And the answer is quite, uh, quite obvious because if you took M to plus infinity, you have the same, uh, if you took, took M to plus infinity, you have the same standard discrepancy principle. So now it's just like uh, a diagonal argument, but from the end to the gam come back, let's say. And you can prove that there exists such a M and alpha that satisfy this uh, discrepancy principle. Uh, 
But it, indeed, it doesn't say nothing about how large should be M. You just prove that there exists, but you don't have a priori how big should be M. And that was our real, real <laughs> question in the beginning. So we did something like a regular uh, uh, a relaxation on, on the discrepancy principle, and we just plug in the gamma M in these two sides. And we choose tau 1 less or equal to tau, tau 2, and tau 2 uh, less than the same lambda that was in the, the discrepancy principle before. And now, uh, what one can show is you can choose the regularization parameters depend on your noise data, your data, and on M, because you have the gamma M here. So implicitly, implicitly it's the M appears here. And again, using a, a diagonal argument, you can prove that there exists such a, a alpha that the minimizer of your functional, Tikhonov functional satisfies satisfy this uh, principle. Um, OK, now, uh, since we have this, this part and this part that depend on M somehow, you can just compare this principle with this principle, and it's nicely just comparing the two terms, it's nicely give you at least an a priori bound for the level of discretization. So in some sense, this is the best, oh, let's say, given, given that you have a noise level delta and you can choose these two parameters, lambda and tau two, uh, appropriately and the discrepancy principle, so the level of the discretization in your domain should be bounded by this quantity. Of course, that uh, if this ratio is very, very, very short, so this can be large, but at least it's an upper bound. And OK, I think this is the main uh, contrib contribution of this approach. And so once you have this gamma bounded, so now you can just say, OK, I, now I have a bound for my discretization, so it's just like choose just one regularization parameter because the other is bounded. I know a, a priori the bound. So you can plug in a discrepancy principle like this and uh, choose just alpha. Uh, OK. Uh, let's move to when uh, not only uh, you, you want to represent your solution in a discrete setting, but also you assume that you have just, oh, sorry, an approximation of your forward operator, let's say Fn. Let's say you discretize F and you have a basis for F in some sense. And for, okay, and this base of for F in the, in the image should satisfy something equally uh, as in the domain, more or less. Of course, with different size. Uh, so you, again, can propose more or less in the same uh, framework uh, discrepancy principle for the functional when you just plug the discretized or the finite approximation of f here and prove more or less the same uh, that we just saw before for regularizing properties of this functional and so on and so forth. And also, uh, you can prove that there exists an, such a, a regular uh, uh, minimized uh, element of this functional that satisfies this equation. And again, the main uh, tool here is just choose in a, such a way, uh, such, with such a diagonal argument, the, the sequence that you want to plug in. So more or less everything goes with the same techniques. And of course, if m and n goes to infinity and delta goes to zero, you recover the, 
the approach in, 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 in finite, infinite dimensional framework. Uh, let's just talk a little bit about uh, convergence rates. And for the convergence rate, it's more tricky than we expect. We should divide again in two cases. And the, in the first cases, uh, we can more or less recover the same convergence rates that is standard in the, the previous works. But in the second case, since we have, in the, this, in the first case, we have like two terms, two, two extra terms that we can handle with a Bregman distance, because the Bregman distance have something similar to uh, the triangular inequality. And so we can handle two terms with this, this technique. But when you look for the discretization also on F, we have essentially three terms. And these three terms, uh, if you try to do something similar with the Bregman distance, you have an extra term. And unfortunately, appears a minus sign uh, in front of one of them that puts all the expectations to zero. So I just divide them two. So for convergence rates, I, we just adopted the, the standard uh, uh, notations that we saw many times this week. Uh, so f is uh, a convex function uh, with subdifferential denoted by this. And here, uh, we cho you choose a, a c in the subdifferential of f, and you can uh, define uh, the Bregman distance in, in relation to this element of the subdifferential. And you already have a feeling of what is this, how, what kind of distance is, measure, it is measuring this. And uh, of course, if, uh, essentially, if this f is the two norm, so we have the two norm here. Uh, so uh, we assume that the forward operator, the full forward operator satisfies this variation of source conditions and the nice thing about this variation of such conditions in some sense is the Bregman distance appear here. So we can play with our theory in this sense. And it will help a lot on the, on the derivation of the theory. So let's, for the theorem, assume, OK, you should choose beta 1 and beta 2 carefully here, and so on and so forth. Uh, but the main theorem is Let's say we can recover the same convergence rates as the standard uh, approach, let's say, and also more or less the same convergence rates in the Bregman distance sense uh, up to some uh, boring uh, hypothesis that you took more the, the time that I just talked here just to show how many. So I skipped that. It's in the paper. If if you want to discuss, uh, we can discuss later. Uh, so in, for when you just need to choose alpha and m uh, for this approach, we can more or less recover the same. But uh, in the, oh, sorry, here should be an F M N here. Uh, and here is a typo. And here is another typo. It just should be N here and M here. But anyway. Uh, so for the two terms, I'm sorry, it's okay, I think it's okay. Uh, when you also have an FM, a finite approximation of your F, uh, since now you have essentially one term, uh, extra term in the, in the estimations, we cannot use the triangular inequality for Bregman distance. We have an extra term. If you try to plug this in your uh, Bregman distance approach, it have a minus sign no? in the wrong place. And we cannot overcome this for as far as we know. So the convergence rates uh, for such approximation depends on delta and, all, and all, also on the, all, the whole approximations of 
your discrete setting uh, and your uh, the, the approximation of the for operator and also in the discrete uh, the approximation in the Bregman distance and this is the extra term that appears there with a minus sign in the wrong place uh, so you should put an, an extra term here just to say okay my for operator uh, the convergence rate depends on the whole this other thing that is not good but in any way it's what we can get and the Bregman distance sorry for that but it's the same thing so nothing new it's the same convergence rates on the setting uh, okay uh, I just very quickly uh, on on the, an application here we have a your favorite parabolic partial differential equations so the forward operator is giving you uh, in some points just solve your parabolic equations knowing uh, sorry given a uh, the the heat coefficient solve your parabolic uh, equations uh, the inverse problem here is getting information about you or in the boundary or mainly in the domain but just a discrete uh, information view that is related to the back and shoulders equations in this sense uh, try to recover your A and A here is a, a two variables, a, uh, a surface so it's a two variable coefficient um, of course now comes uh, what we need to assume about this problem to, to for the regular list to be well posed, the, for the fi for the forward operator that take a in this set and give the information, the L2 should be well posed. So we need uh, assume a little bit more. The a should be more regular than H1. And okay, just for the numerics, we choose sigma like this, and we set a like for uh, uh, the the sigma over two uh, square. Uh, and we choose B in the, in the solution like 0 0.003 just, let's see, uh, what more? Uh, okay, and the, the whole uh, iterations or the whole thing that we, uh, you see here, we assume just sigma constant like two over five for this, our a priori. So we generate the data. We didn't it in another situation for real data. Here we just generate the data. So we generate the data with a cranks and Nixon uh, strategy, uh, the step size in time uh, given by this, and the step size uh, in the space direction like this. And for uh, avoiding inverse crimes, we just uh, solve the inverse problems in a coarse grid like this. So, and we test again uh, the representation of our basis uh, with the same uh, uh, the same grip in space and in time we just uh, take it smaller and smaller. So, here is the data misfit uh, with relation to match points and of course here is just a normalization of how many match points is just the product of this per by this you know? give you the number of match points so your uh, data misfits come down and here is uh, gamma times tau uh, we choose 1% of noise 0.1% of noise in this simulation. So here is the upper bound for the discrepancy principle. So uh, in this sense, uh, it shows that the discrepancy principle with relation to the choice of uh, the regularization parameter and the mesh size should be more or less in this position. And of course, if uh, the theory say, uh, now if M goes to infinity, all is the once you are in the in this region so you are always in this region so nothing new it's just what 
we show. If m goes to infinity, so we recover the, the theory uh, on the previous papers. And so if you look for the evolution of the difference between the, the solution and the approximation of your solution, you see that it is increased, but the lower val value of the L2 norm is coincide with exactly with the number of elements on the base that you choose given by the discrepance principle. So in some sense, it tells you that if you go further in the, your representation, you are putting something not, not really nice on the solution. So in some sense, the, what we, we show here is, okay, uh, is quite uh, agreeing with the, the theory. So the conclusions we saw before, so I just skip. Uh, okay, I, I had other questions, but muito obrigado. Okay, any questions?